What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about debt is the new slavery. And it's going to be a huge, huge problem in 2022. Now, this is what's funny. When you look at the debt levels that people have, generationally, it's very interesting. When you go to the youngest generation, they have the lowest level of debt. And then as you go up, millennials have the highest level of debt preceded by the baby boomers. Now, this is one of the things that is starting to happen. If you have bad credit, this will mess you up in so many ways, because if you have bad credit, what this is going to do is set the stage to mess up your good credit. Let's say you have one credit card that's charged off, but you've got a few credit cards that if you manage to never be laid on to consistently make payments and not go bad. Well, guess what? Because the banks are going to look at your FICO score and they're going to look at, and they're going to do a soft pull and they're going to look at your credit and those bad accounts could put your good accounts in jeopardy because banks are going to become super conservative, super sensitive as we go. And one of the things that's going to happen is your credit is going to become such an important thing. That three digit number could be literally become the mark of the beast on your forehead. So what is going to happen right now in 2020, we had average debt levels go up in 2021. They came down about $1,200 in 2022. I feel because we do not have um, the stimulus money in the economy that the debt level is going to be at an all time high. The average debt level is going to probably be about $20,000 per family. And this is going to be exceptionally high and it's going to be exceptionally problematic because this is like right now, we don't have a credit crunch. If you need a mortgage, you have a good credit score, you can get a mortgage. If you need a car, you have a good credit score, you can get a car. If you need a credit card and you have a good credit score, you can get a credit card. There is no current credit crunch. But what's going to happen in 2022 because debt levels are going to rise because like, all right, you're sitting at home, you know, you're looking at your credit cards. You've got maybe hundred thousand dollars available credit. Your kids are hungry. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the grocery store and you're going to buy food with those credit cards. And this is, you're going to have uh, people who are going to do what I like to call survival spending. They're not going to be using these credit cards to go to Neiman Marcus. Uh, no, no, no. They use these credit cards to buy gas. They're going to use these credit cards to buy food. They're going to use these credit cards for medical bills. This is going to be survival spending. And as this survival spending gets to a certain level, this is going to trigger a credit crunch right now. There's not a credit crunch. If you want to line a credit, whatever you got the credit score, you can get it all day long. That is right now. And I would advise you if your credit is good to get as much credit as you can right now. Let me say that again. I would advise you if your credit is good to get as much credit as you can right now because this is not going to be the environment we have is credit rich. Anyone can get a credit card. Anyone can get a car loan. Virtually anyone can get a mortgage. So it just depends. Well, the, the getting a mortgage and finding the house, that's, that's two different things because these housing prices, once again, these housing prices are not going to crash. I think they will slow down, but they're not going to crash. You're not going to be able to get this house you know, that was going for 400,000 for 260. That's not happening. But I think that debt is going to be the new slavery. What's going to happen? Because right now we're, we're deleveraging from this stimulus economy and we're moving back to the real economy and unemployment is starting to creep up. That is a big, big factor because with unemployment creeping up, with unemployment getting higher and higher, this is going to be a signal to set the recession in 2023 based upon my data, based upon my research. So 
If you're a person that's in a lot of debt right now, you're putting yourself in a position to be globally reset. So my advice would be, number one, let me go ahead and just lay it out. You want to have cash cushion. You know, uh, I did a video about that. And you want to have as much credit as possible. And why do you want to have as much credit as possible? Uh, recently, I was checking my credit and I had one credit card that I paid the balance off after the statement date had dropped. And I was, you know, I really, it, it wasn't a big balance. It was only like $183. $183 dropped my credit score four points. Let me say this again. $183 dropped my credit score four points. Let's say it was a thousand. Let's say it was 2000 because potentially across the board, my utilization on my credit is about 1%. So this keeps me at a really high FICO score. So what you want to do is get as much credit as you can you need to get as much credit as you possibly can because what's going to happen going forward if you have to use that credit and you only have like what's called a slim credit profile maybe 20 25 maybe thirty thousand dollars worth of available credit and if you use ten thousand that's thirty something percent of your credit pro uh, available credit and that will tank your credit score now why do you want to keep your credit score high a lot of people will be looking at your credit score, car insurance, employers, other your other credit card companies. So I have uh, someone that I was working with who actually had a credit card that was closed because of bad other items. You know, this credit card said never late, uh, paid the car off in full every month for years, but they closed his credit, they closed his account because he had other items on his credit report. So once again, just because you know you you have a few credit cards that you good that have not gone into a delinquency state just one just one can set your whole credit profile to be in trouble and a lot of people don't know this so what you should do right now and i'll be doing some trainings on this because um i'm in the state of georgia and credit repair is illegal in georgia so what I have to do is set up a satellite office in the state of Florida to start my credit repair business. So give me a little time to get that going on because um, I've seen there was someone that was doing credit repair in Georgia and he was all over social media and stuff and they hit him with a hundred and eighty thousand dollar fine. You can go to jail. You can get you pay a fine and you can go to jail. So uh, we're not going to do that. So I will be operating my credit repair business out of the state of Florida. So I got to go ahead and get an LLC. I got to get the address. I got to get the office. I got to do a lot of stuff. So give me a little time. But there are many things that, you know, people are not aware of with credit. Credit is super, super, super important. You want to have the best credit that you can manage and you want to use your credit judiciously because all of these folks who are using their credit in a state of survival mode, that they're using their credit to, you know, survive, to eat, to put gas in their car and stuff like this. That is a danger zone. That is a big, 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 big problem. So what's going to happen, I believe, toward the end of 2022 is you're going to have the national debt load for Americans is going to be an all time high. And this is going to set the stage for the recession, because once again, every month I'm going to be looking at unemployment. Unemployment went up in December and we will see if it goes up in January. We'll see if it goes up in February. But you want to be really cautious with your debt levels. If you are married, your name is Mike, your wife's name is Molly, you have two car notes, you both got student loans, and you got credit card debt. Because see, what's going to happen is when you have all of this debt, it's going to prevent you from building wealth because you have so much debt, because all of your money is coming in to serve as debt. 
So you cannot use your money to build wealth because you have all this debt. And there are many, many people. And I was actually shocked because I grew up in the South and people assiduously avoided debt. And I did some research that the average baby boomer in retirement has debt loads of $97,000. That didn't happen years ago because typically old folks, the older folks would get a house, stay in it, pay it off, and they would go into retirement with absolutely no debt. But this is a different world we live in. We have people who are retiring with significant amounts of debt. We have people who are retiring with car payments. We have people who are retiring with house payments. We have people retiring with credit card debt. You know, once upon a time in America, that didn't happen. So this is why I feel that debt is going to be the new slavery, because long as you have substantial amounts of debt, you will not be able to actually use your money to get wealthy because your money's going to be paying off debt. So look for this in 2022. Look for what's going on and keep your eye on your debt levels because ideally you want to be debt free during this inflationary period because this gives you so much flexibility and wiggle room because if you don't have debt like uh, I'm getting ready to make some moves because I don't have a lot of debt, but I got a little bit of debt and I don't even like that. So I'm getting ready to make some moves to get rid of that. And you really, really need to be aware of your debt levels. You need to be a really, really on top of your cash flow because what's going to happen toward the end of 2022, the average American debt load is going to skyrocket. And why is this going to skyrocket? We're in a very inflationary cycle. Gas, food, this stuff is much more expensive than it used to be. And you need gas, you need food. And I'm not talking about going to a restaurant. I'm talking about food at the grocery store. The prices have gone up significantly. Prices of gas have gone up. The prices of the things that you need have gone up and people will be using these credit cards and stuff for survival mode. They'll be using their credit cards to buy food, gas, medical bills. They'll be using these things. And this is going to, like I said, the average American debt load is 5,500 bucks right now. I would not be surprised if that debt load goes to 11,000 or 20,000, depending on who you are and where you are in the country by December, by December, because Inflation is real. Inflation is not a joke. Inflation is not a ghost. Inflation is very, very real. And I feel that in 2022, we're gonna still have inflationary pressures, not like what we saw in 2021, but we're still gonna have inflation because inflation has been around since I was a kid. I remember when gas, you could get two or three gallons of gas for under a dollar. That's gone, that's out the window. Now depending upon what you drive and what kind of gas you use, gas could be close to $5 per gallon. That's very, very significant if you were in income danger zone number one. And let's speak about that. If you're in income danger zone number one, you cannot afford to have a lot of debt because you don't have a lot of money to service your debt. So let's say you're making $30,000 a year. After taxes, that's like 22, 2300 a month, right? You have a car note that's 550 and you're paying, you know, let's say you just bought this car. So you're paying about $400 a month on interest, $400 a month. Your bring home is 22. So 20% of your check is gone just for the car. Then you have student loans and you have credit card debt. So essentially, 80% of your paycheck is going to service debt, you know, between debt and rent. There's no way in the world that you can potentially get wealthy doing that. There, it's just not going to work. So if you're in income danger zone, number one, which is $50,000 a year or less, and over half of America, 80 million people in the workplace make $30,000 a year or less. So 
and I've seen it. I've seen it. Like there was this one guy who was posting on Facebook. He had bought a Dodge Hellcat. I don't know how they let him. He only made 30 some thousand a year. His car payment was $1,200 per month. Half his salary going toward a car payment. Half his salary going to a car payment. That is just the recipe for repossession. It's just a matter of time because if he suffers any kind of short term, like all it takes, I don't know, when did they come get your car? How long, how many payments do you have to be behind before they come repossess your car? I've never had a car repossessed, so I don't know. Is it two months? Is it three months? Is it four months? I know it's not like six months. I know they don't give you that much time. I think if you get behind two to three months, they come get that car. So I wouldn't be surprised if this dude with this Dodge uh, Hellcat, it was already repossessed because let me go ahead and explain something. Why would a dealership sell such an expensive car to someone with knowing that it had a very high likelihood of being repossessed because they can sell it again for almost what they sold it for the first time. I have a friend who owns a car dealership and he used to do buy here, pay here. He doesn't do buy here, pay here anymore. And he told me a story where they sold this one car five times. And he said on the fifth time, the $2,000 down payment that they took was like $1,500 more than what they paid for the car. So they were making money off this car by repossessing it, selling it, because you know, typically people, he said they would keep it eight months and make payments and then they would have to repo it and then they would have to sell it again. And he, he like, he just got tired of it. So he got out of the business, but understand, and this is one of the reasons that I'm getting in the credit repair business is credit scores are going to drop like, crack on a hot summer day and debt levels are going to rise. Um, you can, you know, like, once again, it just depends upon where you are if the income zone. So I'm getting in the credit repair business. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put like a wait list of some, cause once again, I'm in the state of Georgia. Credit repair is illegal in the state of Georgia. So I'm going to have to have an office in Florida and run the credit repair out of there. So one of the things that I want to do is give people financial literacy because typically if you have bad credit and you didn't have like a, a serious medical emergency, like you got in a car wreck and you didn't work for six months, that's real understandable, your credit. And if you know what to do, there's many times that you can get that bad credit off your credit report if you know what to do, if you've had such a life altering medical emergency. But let's say you didn't have a life altering medical emergency and you just had bad financial habits. What's the point in cleaning up your credit without cleaning up your bad financial habits? Because if you continue to have these bad financial habits, you're going to continue to get yourself in credit card trouble. Because um, I remember years ago when someone, the cable guys, they were coming in, they were discussing and this guy who was a cable installer, I don't know what they make, but he was talking about buying this $80,000 Hellcat. And he was like, I'm almost on it. I got enough saved and you know, my credit's good. And I was just sitting there like. So one of the things that we consistently have and we see in our society is people want what I call the thirst, the good life. They want a piece of it. And they don't care how much it costs to have a piece of it. They will do whatever they need to do to get a little piece of it. And that's one of the things because uh, I'm gonna do at Shane's Money, the new personal finance channel. I'm gonna talk about credit, financial literacy and credit education. Big, big thing with credit because like I said, guys, credit is going to be so important in the future. It's going to be ridiculously important in the future. Trust me on this. You want to have the best credit you can and you don't want to let your credit ever, ever go bad because what's going to happen? Like, you know, in China, they have these social media scores and all these other stuff. 
I feel that as we transition as an economy, because right now there are people who are doing DoorDash, Instacart, because I'm going to tell you, I actually signed up for Instacart. I'm, I have no intentions of doing Instacart. I just signed up just to see what it was like. And today I logged in and if you do five batches, you get $65. There ain't really no money in my estimation. <laughs> There's really no money. But this is what's going to be available. Your Instacart, your DoorDash, your Uber, your Lyft. That's going to be available, but as the economy continues to melt down and as people start to run out of money, these services, all of them are going to slow down. All of them are going to slow down. Instacart, like um, what I do, and I use Instacart quite a bit because I actually hate going to the grocery store and I always leave a generous tip because typically when I do that, my Instacart happens pretty quick pretty pretty fast but one of the things that um, you're going to see in this inflationary you know as the stimulus economy is just about deleveraged all the stimulus money is out of the uh, system as we go through this one of the things that you're going to see one of the things that you're going to experience is a lot of economic pain because like I feel that like I said debt's going to be the new slavery because you could make six figures right you can make six figures and because all your money is going to your mortgage your car payments your credit card payments your student loans you have no money to start a business or to invest and this is going to be crippling for people in income danger zone number one it's going to be literally financially crippling these folks will not have money to do jack. They will just be stuck in a very serious situation. So what I'm once again, what I'm predicting based upon my economic analysis, looking at the data is that end of 2022, because, you know, this is January. It's already kind of slow. January and February is slow. Then we get tax money. Then the economy starts hopping again and what we're going to have is a situation where as we move forward in the year, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. There are some financial people that are predicting a stock market crash. They're predicting that the economy is going to tank. So we'll see. But what do you do to protect yourself? Now, if you're in a lot of debt, it's going to be real hard for you to snap your fingers and get out of a lot of debt. So. I would say you get an additional income stream, another part-time job or another little business or something like that. Uh, something else I'm getting ready to do and it starts next Tuesday is your first company. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that. Your first company, because I got a video on uh, Hustlers Kung Fu talking about multiple streams of income and how to set that up. But your first company will be talking because this is what it looks like. You're not quitting your job. I know that many people on YouTube will tell you you can quit your job. You can make all of this money with no capital investment, just hustling and all this other stuff, right? And what we're going to do is have a six week boot camp on getting your first business up and running and started. And there will be more training this year at B School for Hustlers. I'll leave that link in the um, first comment. But once again, guys, 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 if you have a lot of debt, you really need to start working on getting rid of that debt and leaning out your lifestyle. Because if you're sitting on a bunch of debt in 2023, that can be financial devastation. And like I said, I am personally afraid of debt. I don't like having a lot of debt. Debt scares me, even though I have a higher income than most people and I could handle like, if I wanted to trick off and have a Lambo and have a Bentley and have a um, McLaren, McLaren, McLaren and a rent this big old house, I could do that. But why? I'm a simple man. <laughs> I have no need for all that stuff. 
And I have seen people do it. And it's always temporary because when you're spending that much money, it can only last so long. It can only last so long. So, you know, I, I will not be tricking off or doing any of that stuff. But what we got going on this Tuesday is your first company. And oh, a lot of people uh, want to talk to me. All right. I do have a consulting business and my rate is 2,500 bucks an hour. I know that's extremely high and I know that most people can't afford that. I know that. Totally know that. My goal is to be of the best service to the people that I speak to. And if you can, you know, $2,500 is a qualifier. That means that you've done a lot of things right in business and that doesn't scare you. So that's typically a qualifier. And typically uh, I have two to four conversations a month and they're always good because I'm speaking to a seasoned or an established entrepreneur. Now, for those of you who want to speak to me, but you don't have a business or one of these things, it's like, hey, I, I had this gentleman, very nice gentleman. He's like, hey, I'll be in Atlanta. Let's go to dinner. I got you. We go to the best steakhouse and all this other stuff. Um, I go to some of Atlanta's finest steakhouses once or twice a week alone, pretty much. So I don't need a fancy dinner. Um, essentially, my time is super precious. So if I'm gonna to speak to you in a business capacity, I'm gonna get paid in the business capacity. Once again, understand, you know, many of you are not at that point where you're in a position to talk to me and that's cool. I would suggest that you get rolling in your first company or something like that because one of the things that we're going to be focusing on in your first company is getting busy, getting busy, doing the things. You now, one of the things we're going to be doing with your first company is getting busy. What we want to do is get you instilled with the knowledge and the things that you have to do to start your first company. So once again, it's going to be about you getting busy and doing things. And one of the things that a lot of people want to do is just, let me just go ahead and say it. You're not gonna make any money by just having a conversation without action after the conversation. Many people just wanna talk. Like I said, a lot of people just wanna get on the phone, uh, share whatever they have, and that's all well and good. But once again, you gotta get busy. You gotta get busy. You gotta get active. You've gotta start working on the things you need to do to start your business, which will take you getting active. So this Tuesday, 7 p.m., we're gonna have the first training in the boot camp. It's a six week boot camp to get you off and started with the knowledge and information that you need and the training to get your first business started. So that link will be below. I may have a wait list for the credit repair uh, for those who want that, because like, once again, I'm in the state of Georgia, credit repair is illegal here. So essentially I'm gonna have to have a satellite office in Florida to handle that credit repair. So that's one of the things that we're gonna be doing. So if you wanna be part of the boot camp, the link is below and you cannot buy the corporate toolbox. You cannot buy the corporate papers. You cannot buy any of that stuff. Uh, I've got a lot of new training that's coming down this year. So hopefully this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions of this video, because I feel that we currently, we don't have a credit crunch, but we will have a credit crunch toward the end of the year in my estimation. So let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will talk to you in the next one.